Good morning, you wonderful people. Today, I'm, be- I'm going to be making a Christmas gift for my dad. Uh, basically, a bill hook. Or, in Norwegian, Lævkniv. Uh, basically, something durable and heavy-duty you can use around the farm to cut down shrubberies and other stubborn things that is where you don't want them to be. And I'm using an old piece of leaf spring that I'm normalizing numerous times just to really make sure that it doesn't go all spontaneous and crack at me halfway through. Or even worse, at the end. I think you see here the third normalizing cycle that I do just before forging. By leaving the leaf spring in the gas forge for a couple of hours, the cooling process is a lot slower than just leaving it out in the air, which then also makes it even softer and more normalized, or something like that. After flattening, I move over to forging down the point and bending it over the horn to, to make the hook shape that the bill hook got. As I'm doing that, I'm actually also overshooting the curve that the hook will have in the end, because as I'll forge down the edge of it, the curve will start to straighten out again. So you'll see me moving a little bit back and forth between the two, forging down the edge and then bending it back in again. I'm also f- working my way down the length of the knife, forging it down a bit, so that uh, as I'm forging down the edge, it doesn't get too a proportionally wide. And I'm also going in and starting to define the tang. You'll often see me work like this, sort of taking the heat and working my way with it through the material from one end to the other, instead of jumping around from opposite ends. I I feel that basically makes it a little bit easier and quicker to heat it up and to keep productivity at a mile high, as it were. At this point I finished the rough forging and I'm moving over to the angle grinder to do a bit more of a prettying up and getting the profile all nice and shiny, something like that. Trying to make it look better, basically. I'm also using the angle grinder here to invisibly sharpen up the corners for where the thang is. But you you just have to imagine it from now. What you see me here is basically one of the best ways to spontaneously disembowel yourself. Or Possibly you can also use it to sharpen a knife, but no one has ever recommended that for anything. Here I got a piece of angle iron stuck in the vise and um, a piece of super grip mat to keep it from sliding around. Uh, this is actually a really handy setup if you want to do some hand filing or hand sanding or anything like that. But just remember that it takes forever. Here I'm just touching up the tang after going at it with angle grinder and making it look all straight and nice and pretty. I basically let this one cool overnight. Uh, just to really make sure that it's all soft and normal after normalizing. That makes a bit sense, doesn't it? At this point, uh, I almost forgot to put on the vanity sticker, my small little logo. And that's really important, given that it's to my dad, just in case that he forgets who made it, or some something like that. After that, it's into a final round of normalizing before going up to hardening. I'm using the magnet here just to really make sure that I can dial in the color of the steel at what temperature it needs to be hardened at. 
Of course, when it comes to any kind of mystery steel where you don't have a proper data sheet, it's a lot more guesswork than science anyway, but if you take the time and do a little bit of experimenting, cut off a small piece and try it, it's a lot easier to make it right. The next step here is tempering, but before that I need to clean off some of the scale after hardening and oxidation and all of those good things, just to be able to see the temper colors properly. And I'm, again, doing it a bit quick and dirty, as it is a quick and dirty tool for a quick and dirty fool. Now I'm marking out the holes for the tang that I'm going to drill. Uh, you can see that it's still a little bit hot, but uh, you also see there that there's a quite a diagonal hardening line for how deep I managed to get into the oil. And yeah, I did oil hardening. Also, uh, I guess it's worth mentioning that the magnet is only used to figure out when the steel is non-magnetic, which is usually a good correlation to when it's about time to harden it, but it's really more of a guideline than anything else. You can't really take that as the truth, but by experimenting, having the magnet as your starting point and then testing from there, you can usually figure it out. As for a handle, I'm going to be using a piece of ash that I had laying around. Might be slightly undersized for the kind of abuse this knife will probably be seeing, but worst comes to worst, my dad will have to learn some woodworking, or I'll probably more likely end up fixing it for him. That's a problem for another day. First off, I'm just roughing it off into square with the grain of the wood, trying to get a little bit extra strength out of it. And then moving on to sawing out uh, a slot, or a slot, it, it, one of those, for uh, where the tang is going to go. To help find the center of these holes, I'm first going over with the center punch and then just drawing out the circles to get easier to see when I'm over at the drill press. And here I'm just using some normal bolts to attach them together and naturally uh, they fit east on the first try. Later on I replaced these uh, nuts with some wing nuts to make it a bit easier to tighten up when use or disassemble or anything weird that my dad might want to do. If I recall correctly now, I think the handle was about 70 centimeters long and the knife itself being about 30 centimeters, which for my dad is just the right length for him to actually chop things at the roots without bending too much. Which, you know, for an old fool, I think that's a bonus. I just have a personal preference to never really use sandpaper unless I have to. For example, if the grain of the wood is all gnarled up and curly. But for the most part, I tend to finish especially tools like this. To just finish them up with a card scraper or just the edge of a knife, just scraping it along. That tends to do just a trick. And of course, with most things that are going to see some use and abuse, Boiled linseed oil is the thing, both for the metal and the wood. And there you have it, just about a day's work, I think, if you exclude the normalizing cycles and all that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.